Oh, that made my spirit feel good right there. Y'all give it up for our worship team this morning. I promise they're not supposed to worship for 45 minutes, but we get it in around here. Get it in. And because God, all right, all right. Yeah. Telling you, I'm telling you. Sing it one more time. And because God is the greatest power, we shall never, we shall never, ever be defeated. Sing a halo, sing a halo. Hallelujah, Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Mark, Mark chapter 4. Oh, don't leave like that, Steve. <laughs> no. Let's not scare away the dove this morning. Yes, sir. Mark chapter 4. Because God. Greatest power we shall. All right, all right. <laughs> I forgot where I was for a second. Oh, I know where I am in scripture. I mean, in this room, I went into my own little. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 1 goes like this. Which again, by the sea, such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into a boat in the sea and sat down. You can bring these monitors down just a little bit. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land, and he was teaching them many things in parables. And he was saying to them in his teaching, listen to this. Behold, the sower went to sow, and as he was sowing, some seed fell behind the road, and, so, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth. Somebody said it had no root. After the sun rose... <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, the sun's coming up. We talked about this last week. The same sun that melts crayons, hardens clay. What are you made of? Look at your neighbor and say, what are you made of this morning? What are you made of this morning? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. <sighs> After the sun had risen and it was scorched because it had no root, it withered away. Another seed fell among thorns and thistles, and, and the thorns and thistles came up and choked the seed, 
and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell on good soil. Other seeds fell on good soil. I thought that would be good news. We didn't get to finish that last week. Other seeds fell on good soil. Other seed fell on good soil. Lord Jesus, look at somebody saying, I'm good soil. I don't know if you know. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I'll help you in a second. I don't know if you know. I'm, I'm good soil. I'm good soil. I'm good soil. I'm good soil. I, I'm good. Lord, I'm good soil. In fact, just raise one of your hands and say, Lord, I'm good soil. I'm good soil. If you want to use somebody, use me, God. If you want to bless somebody, bless me, God. If you want somebody to be fruitful, God, I'll do it. I'll go. I Send me. I'll go. I'm good. Good soil. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Other seed fell on good soil. And as they grew up, they increased. Ooh, I'm coming back to that. They yielded a crop that produced some 30, some 60, and some 100-fold. And he was saying, he who has an ear, let him hear. As soon as he was, as soon as he was alone, his followers, uh, along with the 12, began asking him about the parables and saying to him, excuse me, and he was saying to them, to you it has been given the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, they get everything in parables. So that while seeing, they may not perceive. Coming back to that, man. And while hearing, they may not understand. Otherwise, they might return and be forgiven. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We love you. We give you glory and honor. Lord, help me help them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can have your seat. We can turn the lights on, guys. You can turn the lights on. You know. People got paper Bibles. Amen. Amen. Y'all doing all right today? I'll just make sure we paid the bill so we could turn all the lights on. Amen. We, we paid the bill, I'm sure. I'm sure. So we could turn the lights on. Y'all doing okay? Oh, y'all. Are y'all all all right? Y'all look like y'all been, been going through some stuff. Y'all, y'all. Y'all been fighting some battles? Can I remind y'all of something before I get into this? The devil is a liar. God is exalted. And you'll never be defeated. Oh, that's good enough to just give God a praise right there. Amen. I'm so glad about it. I, 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 I love our church because, uh, number one, the Bible says, Bible says, commit your plans unto the Lord and he will be, they will be established. And so we submit our plans to God. We submit our plans to God. But then we surrender our plans, our, our will to his spirit. Are y'all with me today? Y'all, we surrender our will to his spirit. And because we surrender our will to his spirit, there is a certain amount of worship that we get into. And when we get into that worship, man, it just happens. And I want you to know something. Because some of y'all may be saying, well, I'm not, just, I'm not a musical person. Or PD, I don't sing. PD, I'm not a, I'm not a musician. And, and, and you might be missing a moment because of what you think you aren't. But everything in this world was made to worship. Come on. Everything in, everything in this world was made to worship. So much so that, that, that God said, if you don't worship, if you don't do what you were made intrinsically to do, then I'll let the rocks do it. You said, PD, rocks don't worship. If you don't worship, they will. Trees will worship. The ocean will worship. It'll go back and forth and say, Jesus, Jesus. If you, if you listen close enough, the trees will say, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, if you're paying attention, you'll go in your laundry room and the washing machine will say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So if you don't do it, if you don't do it, the Bible says all creation waits in groaning for the manifestation of the, y'all not ready to have church today. So you got to find a place 
to get into a worship space. Now, now, why am I saying this? Because I need you to understand something. That that when you get into that space, or when that when the God is too big to bless a person on your road. God is too big to just bless a person on your road. So what he'll do is he'll, he'll come down and he'll make room for himself on your road. And when he's blessing them, he'll bless you. He'll bless you. He'll bless you. You don't believe me? The Bible says this. The Bible says, the Bible says that he says, I'm too big to bless a person. He said, when I bless you, it'll bless your children and your children's children and your children's children. Even unto the fourth generation, what you got to know is when worship is open, you need to step in and get you some. You need to. When the worship is happening in the room and the person next to you is going crazy, I was, I'm going to get in trouble. I was talking to a preacher. He said something like this. He said, um, a, a preacher friend of mine, I love him, but he was wrong. He said, uh, he said, I want people to worship but not in a way that disrupts other people. And I start thinking, disrupt. I want people to worship in a way that they infect other people. I want your worship to infect somebody. I want, to, I, I want your worship to be contagious. But, but when there's that person on your road and they're going crazy, Closer and closer and closer because I know it's a blessing coming. See, that person going through too much, too much hell for God not to pay attention. And what I want to do is I want to get in close with you. So the Bible says that when my sister is crying, I got to cry with her. But when my sister is rejoicing, I got to rejoice. I got to rejoice too. I got to connect with her worth her, her worship. See, worship is worship. Hear me? Worship is worship. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? It, it, it is saying that God is worthy of my praise. He is worthy of my honor. So I can't just sit there with my arms folded. He's worthy. I can't complain because I don't like this song. He's worthy. I can't get upset because something don't sound right or something don't feel right. He is worthy of my praise. And if I don't praise him, rocks will start standing up talking about Jesus. Jesus. So I'm going to praise God because wh wherever the praises come, wherever we say, oh, we say, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. Some people told, somebody told me once before, Pastor Dante, that's not in the Bible. What do you mean that's not in the Bible? No, that's not in the Bible. It never says that in the Bible. So, it, you're right. It doesn't say that. You know what it says? It says he inhabits the praises of his people. That means wherever my praise is, God said, oh, I got to show. Hey, I'm going to show. Ding dong. It's me, Jesus. I heard it was a praise party happening in here. I just want to get in on it. Hey, I, 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 I heard I'm the guest of honor. I just want to be invited to my own party. Is there anybody willing to throw Jesus a party in here? say when the blessings go up, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. That's not literally in the Bible. But when the bless, when the praises, excuse me, when the, praises, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. That's not literally in the Bible. But when the praises go up, Jesus comes down. Now you think, Marika, you think Jesus stepped into a place and blessings don't come to that place where he is? Wherever he is, that's where the blessing is. Are you crazy? So I'm going to praise God because I need a blessing. So, so, so. But wor worship is about worship. Somebody say worship. So, so, so it, it, it comes from the idea of appraisal. It comes from the idea of appraisal. How do you appraise a thing? 
do you appraise it? What is the value of the thing? Now, we talked about value and worth before. I don't, I don't want to get into that, but understand something, that, that something that could be very valuable could be worth nothing if you don't need it. Something could be extremely valuable and worthless. Value has to do with need. Okay, all right, all right. So, so, so what happens is if I'm in the desert and I have something that's extremely valuable, like a diamond, don't do me no good because what I need is water. Y'all with me today? So what I'm doing is I'm appraising his worth. I didn't show up to church to look cute. I mean, I look cute. But I didn't show up to church to look cute with y'all. I came to church. I came to church. I came to church to give a proper appraisal about who my God is and what he's doing in my life. Is there anybody who's just, I, I'm a certified appraiser. I just, this is what praise is. Praise is appraisal. Do y'all get that? Praise is appraisal. You appraise things that are valuable. If it's not valuable, I wouldn't praise it. That's why I come to church. Oh, hear me right here. I come to church to praise something that is valuable. I, I know, I know y'all waiting for me to get into the message, but I'm already in it. Because your praise is a seed. Your praise is a seed. And what I'm doing is I'm sowing my seed into the atmosphere. And the fruit of my worship, the fruit of my praise is Jesus himself. He is not, oh, hear me right here. He is our, the Bible says, when you seek God, you'll receive a reward. You know what the reward is? God. I seek God to receive a reward. The reward for my seek is God. And I need God in my life, so I release a seek. Here we go. Oh, Jesus. So I release a praise. I release a praise into the atmosphere. And so what, what, what you're doing while you're missing an opportunity to worship is you're missing a chance to release seed into the atmosphere. You're releasing a chance to release this worship into the atmosphere. And then as, as other people release seed, then you look around and God intervenes on their behalf. And you're saying, I wish God would intervene on my behalf. And he said, the, the fruit of my intervention is praise. I show up where I'm, oh man. Pastor Dante, but I don't know how to sing. That's okay. The Bible says it don't sound good to him anyway. It said it smells good. The Bible says your worship is a sweet aroma to the Lord. It don't, it's not supposed to sound good. It's supposed to smell good. Oh man, this is not what I mean. Lord, have mercy. So I want my worship to smell good unto the Lord. I want to send a sweet fragrance to the Lord. So I lift my hands and I cry out with everything that's on the inside of me. And the Bible says the aroma of my worship is to the Lord. Are y'all with me today? So I want to release an appraise. I want to release worship to the Lord. And that is my seed. See, I need you to understand something. Sound is source. Sound is source. Say that. I got a lot of notes today, so I just need y'all to come with me. Uh, uh, write it down, take a picture, whatever you got to do. Sound is source. When I release a sound, th th there is something that happens. It is the uh, initiation of what God is about to do in my life. Does that make sense? But seed is resource. Sound is source. Seed is resource. Say that. Sound is source. Seed is resource. So now, now when God gives me, oh, hear me right here. When God said, let there be, he spoke and things begin to be. Does that make sense? But now what, he didn't give you, oh, hear me right here. He gave you the ability to reproduce what he produced. He spoke it, and it existed. 
But now you have seed inside of you, hear me right here, and you get to reproduce what God produced. Do I have to give an anatomy lesson in here? Are y'all with me? Okay. So you can't just speak and make a person. There is resource on the inside of you. And when the right resource comes together, send your kids to children's church, when the right resource comes together, you produce something. Now, I, I, I'm, I, again, I'm teaching already. What you produce never looks like what you started with. What you produce Never looks like what you started with. This is how seed works. Seed never looks like the tree. God puts the mystery of the tree in the seed. Seed never looks like, uh, hear me right here. God puts the mystery, and, 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 and you keep wondering why God haven't done it, or God haven't fixed it, or God haven't turned it around. You're looking for the tree. You need to take a step back and look for the seed. God doesn't give you trees. The Bible says his sound produced a tree. Your seed produces a tree. Are y'all with me today? Your resource. Now, so Pastor Dante, what does that look like? Well, Paul said it like this. He said, we see now in a mirror dimly, but one day we will see clearly, we'll see fully. But he gave you a mystery. He put it inside a seed and the mystery. Of the whole forest is inside a seed. What does that have to do with me? Well, uh, hear me right here. What, what if God put the mystery to your purpose inside something you don't recognize? What if God put the keys to the kingdom? He, he told Peter, he said, I'm, I, I give unto you the keys to the kingdom. Peter looked up and said, Said, no, you're missing something. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Peter said, yeah, I get it. Get it. And he said, no, 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 no. All power on heaven and on earth I give unto you. And we keep looking for the natural when God said I'm doing it in the spiritual. We keep looking for a natural representation of what God said I'm fixing in the spiritual. But it's in the mystery of the seed. Somebody say the mystery of the seed. So he puts potential. He puts potential in a seed form. He puts potential. And, and what you do is if you ignore the potential, you might miss the forest. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use seed for a second. Me and Mike do this. Come with me. Right, can y'all hear me? Sound like I had one out for a second. Okay. Okay. Steve, how old were you when you started playing piano? Six years old. At six years old, did you know you were going to be Grammy nominated? No. At six years old, did you know that you were going to be playing music for people all around the nation? No. At six years old, did you know you were going to be writing songs for the likes of like John P. Key and Kiara Sherrod and all these people? Did you know you were going to be doing that? At six years old, you sat down at a piano and realized you had potential. At six years old, show me something that you probably knew how to play at six years old. Well, you're the most talented six years old I ever. <laughs> Don't play with me. You're taking this analogy too far. You was a savant. You put happy birthday to you. <laughs> now show me something that, you know, you, you could play now comparatively to what you just played. Just, just anything. Just anything. Understand something. Yeah, give it up for him now. 
That's on the, on the, I just threw that at him, okay? I just threw that at him. Now, understand something. All that was in the six-year-old. All of it was in the six-year-old. But, 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 but God hides the mysteries of the beauty of this right here. Come on, come on. God hides the mystery of that. I want you to know something. There's an orchestra on the inside of you. There's an orchestra on the inside of you. And what God does is he says, I'm going to put my spirit in you. In the seed form. Go back to the seed. Go back to the, go back to the uh, six-year-old. Don't, don't play me either. Yeah, there you go. Hey. <laughs> That's not all right. Bang, 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 bang. That's where the six is. Oh, but seriously. And so what happens is I got to be put in the right environment. I got to be put in the right situation. I got to be put in the right circumstance so that I can produce the potential that's alive on the inside. Oh, man, y'all not helping me. I got to be put in a place where I can produce the potential that's on the inside of me. Now, where is potential produced? <laughs> Potential's, potentials produced in darkness. See, 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 all, the, all that you learned how to do, you didn't learn how to do in the open. You didn't learn how to do in front of everybody. You learned how to do by yourself, making mistakes, falling off, giving fingers hurting, sweat. And, then, and, and, and what you don't realize, see, a lot of us, we want the now. We want the furniture, but God don't give you the furniture. He give you a tree. And you say, well, what am I supposed to do with this? And he say, make furniture. God doesn't give you the fruit. He gives you the seed. And you say, God, what am I supposed to do with this? And he says, make an overture. Make something out of it. You got to make it out of the seed that he provided you. No, but I want to win a Grammy. Okay, but it starts in a dark room. Oh, I know. I want to. I want to be on. I want to be on iTunes and have my name. Yeah, it starts in the dark room. And you keep avoiding the dark places. You keep avoiding the dark places, thinking you're ready now. But you don't realize it's the darkness and the moisture and the worm. Those are your co-workers, but I'm not going to say that. <laughs> it is the dark places that produces the seed on the inside of you. You're not a seed, you're a forest. But you got to know that there has to be a necessary breaking. Somebody say a necessary breaking. A necessary breaking. And when I get that necessary breaking, come on now. When I get that necessary breaking, all of a sudden, what, what, what was dormant on the inside of me comes alive. Oh, what was dormant on the inside of me comes alive. And so what, what you keep trying to avoid, God keeps trying to use to break you out. Well, I'm just not like that, PD. I'm just not like that. Yeah, God is trying to use. God is trying to use it to break you out, to break you forth. And if you don't allow him, then you'll always stay a seed. The Bible says it like this, unless a seed fall to the ground and die, it will only stay one. It'll, only stay, it'll, it'll always be about you. He says, but when it breaks open, when it dies and breaks open, then it'll be about, it'll be about what you can do. See, see, it's not about you, it's about what you can do. It's not about saying, it's not about me. It's about what I can do. I'm teaching today. We'll shout, to, we'll shout next week, okay? I promise, we'll scream. But I need y'all to get this. It's not about me. It's about what I can do, okay? So, so there's a significant thing that I want to talk about today. The Bible says this, that God gives seed to the sower. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Uh, you don't have to turn there like prego. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, it says this. It says, it says he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. I need you to remember this. Say he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Eater. I don't know what 
Oh, I don't know what's in it. Either, 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 either. He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, it means this. In Proverbs, he says it like this. God looks after children and food. Which one are you? Nobody want to nobody wanna say anything. Make sure the gating is off for my mic. Make sure there's no gate on for my mic at all. No gate. No gate. No gate. Okay? Because that's what that is, I think. Anyway, God gives seed to the soul and bread to the eater. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? Well, it means this. It means it's something very simple. It means that some people he blesses and some people he invests in. Some people he blesses and some people he invests. Now, I, I want to get a blessing, amen, but I, I want to be an investment. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, I'd rather be an investment. Because when God invests in you, he gives you something that will reproduce, that'll grow and grow and grow and grow. When he gives you, when he gives you bread, you got to come back for the bread. When he gives you seed, then you can feed other people. Oh, hear me right here. And so what some of y'all have been praying for a blessing, you've been saying, God, I need a blessing. God, I need a blessing. God, I need a blessing. He said, I gave you a seed. I put it inside your purpose. I put it inside your purpose. He said, and if you figure out what to do with that seed, you won't need a blessing. Oh, hear me. You will be a blessing. If you figure out what to do with the seed, what, what, what's, the, what's the seed on the inside? Look at somebody and say, I got seed on the inside of me. God puts purpose in people he can trust. God puts purpose in people he can trust. If he can trust you with it, he'll get you to it. Does that make sense? If he can trust you with it. And I'm looking at some people in here that I, I, I know there's at least four or five of y'all who believe, God, I'm trustworthy. God, I'm trustworthy. Go ahead and bless me with it. I'm telling you, I'll, I'll help other people. I'll serve other people. I, I, I won't just keep it to myself. God, God never invests in greedy people. I hope y'all taking notes today. God never invests in greedy people. God never invests in greedy people. What he does is he takes, the, he takes something beautiful and he hides it in a seed. Now, Pastor Dante, why does he hide it in a seed? To keep it from the haters. Oh. If I didn't put it in a seed, the birds could come get it. If I didn't put it on the seed, everybody could just come, come take it. He said, I put it on the inside of you. And you keep wondering why you feel alone or you feel isolated or you feel by yourself. And God said, it's because I put you in seed form. And I'm about to do so. If you let me break you open, if you let me break you open, the people will be blessed by what I put on the inside of you. But I had to hide it in the mystery of your purpose. And the failure of the African-American church, I'm going to say it right here. The failure of African-American pastors is that every time we talk to you about seed, we, you think it have to do with money. But it doesn't have to do with purpose. What Jesus does is he says, he says this, he says something very simple. He says, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. He says, so I'm trying to use your treasure to teach you about your purpose. I'm trying to use your treasure. You think I can't call down, the, the Bible says, do you think I can't call down 10,000 angels? Do you think I cannot bless you? I cannot help you? I cannot pull you out of this situation? I cannot pull you out of the circumstance? Of course I can pull you out. I'm leaving you in because it's producing something on the inside of you. And what you got to do is let me do my work. Say, do your work, Lord. Because everything in your life, everything in your life, God's going to do through a seed. Do y'all hear me right here? It's just a little, it's just a little kid that's six years old that says, I kind of like playing the piano. It's just a little child. It's just a little child that says, I, I sort of like cooking. I, I think I can work some things. And God's saying, yeah, keep doing it. Keep striving. Keep going for it. And as you keep going for it, I'll start to produce something that's on the inside. 
But what happens is you, you like to cook, but you don't like to be cooked. And God said, I got to prepare you for what I have prepared for you. Yeah, this is it's hard to have. I ain't going to get no amens on this one. But he says, everything, everything I want to do in your life, I'm going to do through a seed. I'm going to do through a seed. I'm going to do, I'm going to hide it in your purpose. I'm going to hide it in your ability to dance. And you thought you danced because you like to dance and you didn't know that you were supposed to start a dance company and that hundreds of kids would learn how to dance through you. And because of that, uh, because they come to you to learn how to dance, you get to whisper little things about Jesus. All of a sudden, you know, God is with you. God is for you. And then, and then you thought it was just about you, but it wasn't when he broke you open. It was about the speed. And I could tell story after story after story about how you thought it was just, you know, it's just nothing. It's just a little hobby. And God said, no, I'm about to use, I'm about to break you open and use you to do something. God has everything great in a seed. Say that. That's why. <laughs> That's why I'm going to get in trouble for this one. That's why you don't need to be worried about who you in competition with. Amen. Seeds don't compete. Either I'm producing or I'm not, but I'm not in competition with you. Whatever God put in me, whatever God has for me is mine. I'm not worried. Look at your neighbor and just say, I'm not worried about you, girl. I'm not worried about you. God put it on the inside of me so that it can produce something. Not in competition with nobody. That's why you don't need to be worried about what, uh, listen, I want to help you right here. Your purpose is not general admission. Your purpose has reserved seating. You don't have to race nobody to your seat. Oh, Jesus. Hear me right here. You don't got to push nobody to get to your seat. Your purpose is not general admission. Your purpose got your name on. The Bible says, <laughs> side note, the Bible says that when you come into a room, stay in the back of that room. The Bible says when you come into a room, stand in the back of that room. It says because if you go to a seat <laughs> that's in the front of the room, someone greater might show up and embarrass you. I'm not making this up like Prego. He said, someone greater might come into the room and embarrass you. He said, but go stand in the room. Stand in the back of the room and wait to be called forward. Here, I want to help you right here. It's some of y'all season. God's saying, hey, you, okay, y'all, you right there. It's time for you to come forward. That seed alive on the inside of you. Come forward now. I'm calling it out right now. My daughters, my son, it's time for you to come forward. God said, I'm calling you to a new place. I'm calling you to a new position. It's time for you to come out of the dark place into his marvelous light. Come forward. Look at somebody and high five and say, come forward. Come forward. Come forward. And there, I, I went to a thing last night. Commercial. I do this. I just go stand in the back. I'm not special. I'm not, well, let me say this. I know what's on the inside of me. I know who I'm called to be, what I'm called to do. But when I walk into a room, I stand in the back. Pretty soon somebody from the front row looked back, waved at me, said, hey. I said, no, 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 I'm okay. You know that false humble stuff. That... It's all Jesus, man. It's just, it's not me. It's Jesus. I waited in the back of the room for a little while longer. He came and found me. He said, hey, hey, it's a seat next to me. I said, oh, no, man, I'm, I'm fine right here. Though. He said, no, 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 man. 
It's the seat next to me. You need to be up on the front row. I said, okay, if you say so. <laughs> lead the way. Now look, I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. There were some other people sitting next to him. He made them move. No, no offense to them at all. No offense to them at all. It, 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 I, didn't, I didn't even know them. Obviously, he had some authority because <laughs> he, made, he made them move. And, and, and what God showed me when I was studying this morning is he's about to move some people out of your way. No offense to them, but he's about to move. That's my spot. Oh, hear me right here. One, four and five, player. This is my spot right here. God said he's about to move some people out of your way. He said because he, because he called you to a new place, but it's going to be because of seed you've sown. Does anybody have some seed in the ground? So he said, he said, because of seed you sown, I'm about to start moving you to a new place. And this is going to be uncomfortable for some of y'all. Because in order for a seed to produce what's on the inside of it, a seed has to be broken open. And if you're afraid to be broken, you'll never produce. You're afraid to be broken. You're afraid to be broken. What does it look like to be broken? What does it look like to be broken? It means to be available to be open to what God wants to do in my life. See, I want to be open to what God wants to do in my life, but I understand that greatness has to grow. You don't just start out great. You might have an inkling. Uh, it's something on the inside of me. I'm, I, feel, I feel like I'm, I'm purposed to do something, I'm purposed to be something, but I don't just start that way. I, I, I start out as a seed. And as I start lending myself to the ground that I'm planted in, Lord have mercy, Jesus, y'all not hearing this. As I start lending myself to the ground I'm planted in, then some, the chemical balance in that ground between what's happening in there and what's happening in me, all of a sudden it starts a chain reaction about what God is trying to do in my life. And when that, and I got to allow the ground to do its work. If you avoid every hard situation, Every hard circumstance. And you won't have the power to break out. Uh, you won't have the power to break out. You, you won't have the power to break out. And what I'm praying for you today is I'm praying for you to have the power to break out. But it comes, it, you, you, know how, you know how you get that power? You go through. You can't break out until you go through. Y'all hear me? You can't break out until you go through. What, what is it right now you're going through? Every single one of you, you're going through something. God said, I'm using it. I'm, I'm using it. If I were, all things are working for your good. If I wasn't using it, I'll take you out of it. The truth is, hear me right here. You, you keep asking God to restore things that he brought you out of because they weren't good for you in the first place. I clap for myself right here. You keep asking God to, God, bring me out of this. God, take me out of this. And he said, no, I need you to go through it. And then you say, God, well, bring back what it, how it used to be. Lord, have mercy. That, that's such a frustrating statement. Bring back what it used to be, how it used to be. And God said, no, I'm done with that. Yeah. Hear me right here. I want to bless you right here. I know we haven't shouted at all today, but I want to bless you right here. Some of the things that you keep drawing back into your life, God said, I'm done with. Some of the people that you keep drawing back into your life, God said, I'm done with. You got everything you were supposed to get out of that relationship. It's over now. Move on. You got everything you were supposed to get out of that relationship. It's over now. Move on. You squeeze that thing and squeeze that thing and squeeze that thing. It ain't going to produce nothing else but heartache and pain. I'm done with it. Move on. Some of y'all need the spirit of Kim. <laughs> oh, the visitors like spirit of Kim. The spirit of keep it moving. Keep it moving. God said, I already gave. 
You squeeze the life out of that relationship. Y'all broke up, got back together, broke up again. Got back together on the download, didn't tell nobody. It go. And the reason you can't get the new thing is because you stuck on the old thing. And God said, behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Shall you not perceive it? <laughs> Somebody say, greatness has to grow. So I, I put greatness on the inside of the seed, and then I, I, I blossom that greatness. I, I grow that greatness. And if you have a seed of greatness, know that God is growing you through it. What am I going through right now? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Listen, listen, you, you can't get to it unless you go through it. Does that make sense? You can't get to it unless you go through it. You got to believe God for what, what he's bringing you through. Stop trying to avoid what God's using to make you strong. Do y'all hear me right here? Stop trying to avoid that thing God's using to make you strong. La last thing, I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. Last thing, I'm done. Every seed has a purpose. Every seed has a name. Every seed has a purpose. Every seed has a name. As you pray, listen, we, we're going to get ready to dismiss. As we're even praying to dismiss, I, I, I want you to start naming your seeds. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? Whenever you sow into one thing, no, whenever I sow into one thing, I need to know what I'm sowing for. That sounds crazy. No, it, it's not crazy. It's the truth. You ever went inside a seed store? Try to buy, try to buy a seed, you don't know what the name is. Well I, I, well, I think I won't. Well, I'm, gonna put, I'm just going to give you my money, and then you just give me some seed. No, 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 no. I want you to start naming your seeds. Here, I'm sowing this for my children. I'm sowing this for my life. I'm sowing this for my purpose. I believe God's doing something new in my life. I'm sowing this for my ministry. I'm sowing this for my business. Oh, hit me right here. Yeah, I'm sowing this. I, I, I'm, I'm sowing this for the business I know I'm supposed to start. I don't have the tools and the resources yet, but I'm going to sow a seed. I don't, I, 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 don't have, I don't have everything. I don't have all the information, but I'm going to sow a seed. Listen, I've been praying for my granddaughter. I'm going to sow a seed right here. I've been praying for my grandson. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sow a seed right here. And, and, and my seed will produce what I call it. Oh, 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 oh. My seed will produce what I call it. Pastor Dante, what? Why you say that? Well, God is having a conversation with Adam. It's one of the first early conversations he had with Adam. But he looks at Adam and he says, hey, you know, I made all these animals. I made everything here. He said, but, he said, but none of it has a name yet. So the Bible says he started bringing everything to Adam to see. And whatever he called it, that's what it was. I believe that it wasn't even that until he called it that. What's that mean for me, Pastor Dante? Well, it means uh, he who has an ear, let him hear. It, it, it means that you can start calling things. You can start speaking to things. You can start speaking to things. And it, even if it didn't exist, it'll exist now because you called it. Pastor Dante, you're just making this up. No, the Bible says speak those things that are not as though they were. And watch what you say become life. I started this the same way I'm going to end it. Your sound is a source. As I start calling things in my life. Some of y'all, you, you, you look around at your life right now and you say, this is not the life I'm supposed to have. Can I tell you something? The Greek word for say is lego, L-E-G-O. If you want a different life, you're going to have to build it with your words. You're going to have to start speaking to yourself, speaking to your kids. This is a seed. Speaking to your house. Speaking to... 
opening up your mouth and just saying, God, I believe you're going to do it. I believe you're going to fix it. I believe you're going to change it. You're going to give me, uh, hear, hear me right here. You're going to give me the husband that I've been praying for. Uh-oh. Hear me right here. You, 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 <laughs> you keep sharing your list with your girlfriends. God said you need to be praying about that thing. You, you sharing it with people who can't do nothing about it. He said, you need to be telling God, hey, hear me right here. Your words build your world. Start with a seed of just what you say. Start with a seed of just what you say and what you release. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. What you release, what you release, you'll see. It just starts with you opening up your mouth. You want a different life? Start to speak it out. It's a seed. Start to name your seed. Hear, hear me right here. You start to name it. I'm, I'm sowing this for my children. I'm sowing this for a better life. I'm sowing this for my business. I'm sowing this for my husband. I'm sowing this. If he not what you want him to be, girl, you need a prayer life. Stop trying to change him. Somebody start the car. I'm in trouble. I'm trying to change him, change you. Start by praying. Start by praying. And when I when I start changing, and hear, hear, hear me, because I'm a seed, when I start changing, everything around me has to change. Right? I want you to understand something. God is trying to grow you up. God is trying to grow you up. I'm not going to go back to here, but I, God is trying to grow you up. He, said, he says, you're not going to increase until you grow up. Some of y'all won't increase, but you haven't grown up. God says, when I, when, I, when I mature you past that six-year-old, when I can mature you past that six-year-old, all of a sudden, the orchestra will come alive on the inside of you. I got to grow you past that six-year-old. How to grow you to a new place, a place where maturity in Jesus is trust. Are y'all with me? A place where you trust God. He said, when you start trusting me, I'll bring the orchestra alive on the inside of you. Some of y'all got an orchestra, orchestra on the inside of you. That's why you get frustrated. You get mad at people who can't do what you do, who can't think how you think, who can't, who can't think at the rate and speed that you think at. And it, you, you, you think you're just angry. You're not angry. You're frustrated because you're a seed bottled up. But God said, if I can grow you enough to be nice to people, then I can open up on... If I can grow you enough to be kind to people, you can't be their boss because you haven't grown up. It's not that you don't think beyond them. It's that you're not grown up enough. You're not mature enough to. He says, so when I grow you up, I'll, I'll make you ruler over me. He said, but you got to be faithful over a little bit. I'll make you ruler over many. Okay? Bow your heads. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, I, I thank you that this was a maturing message, Lord Jesus. It's not just about shouting. It's not just about jumping, dancing, God. But it's about growing us up, God. You said as we grow up, you would increase us. I'm praying, God. Now I know some people in this room. God, you're growing them up, God. You're growing them up right now, God. You're growing them up. You're growing up. You're maturing them, God. Lord, and I'm praying, God, that... Thank you, Lord Jesus. As you start expanding them, God for new territory. As you start breaking them open, Lord Jesus, I'm praying that they can take new territory, God. That they can do things that they never could do before. That they can go places they never could go before because you grew them up, Lord Jesus. God, we thank you, God. And I pronounce blessing over each and every person in here, Lord Jesus. As a priest, I pronounce blessing over each and every person in here. Listen, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to offer you Christ.
You might be listening to this and say, Pastor Dante, I, I never heard any of this before. In fact, I don't know who this Jesus is. And maybe I heard of Jesus, but I'm not, I, I'm not really sure if I know him for sure. I'm telling you now, it'll be the best decision you ever made to meet Jesus on today. There's somebody next to you who knows who Jesus is. They can testify how good God's been in their life. And I'm telling you right now, if you take a chance, if you take an opportunity to get to know Jesus, then all of a sudden, what you thought was in vain, God will show you purpose. God will pull it out of you. He'll show you purpose. If you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart change my heart come into my life change my life father today i accept you as my lord and savior in jesus name i pray amen and amen if you said that prayer for the first time or you believed it for the first time i'm going to ask you to take one more step i'm going to count to three and all i want you to do is raise your hand as high as you can raise it nobody's going to criticize you nobody nobody's going to make fun of you Nobody's going to ask you any questions. We just want to recognize you, and we just want to clap our hands and thank God for you. One, it doesn't matter how you got here or who you came here with. Two, it only matters that you make a decision today to receive Jesus. Three, if that's you, raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody's coming to pray with you. Somebody, Come on, come on. Raise your hand as high as you can raise it. Don't worry about what anybody thinks about it. If that's you today, if that's you today, Today, and the saints are rejoicing all over the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, do me a favor. Stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise in here. Come on, lift your 